Hello and welcome to Divi Coaching. In today's tutorial, I was going to be having a look at sections, rows, columns and modules. Um, but when I started getting into the builder, I realised there's quite a lot to cover on the basics of setting up the builder before we dive into that. So today's lesson is all about how to do that, um, introducing you to the builder and all the basic settings to get it up and running. And then in the next tutorial, uh, we can start to look at introducing the various sections of the page. OK, so without further ado, let's get going. There are a number of different ways to get into the Divi Builder, and which one you use will depend on whether you're starting with a new page or editing an existing page. So let's have a look at the different options. If we go into Pages and we go Add New Page, and we'll give a title to our page of Services, and we could just click on here to say use Divi Builder and that will take us straight into the builder. So that's that's one way. The other thing we can do if we save this page as a draft, we go back to the menu here and we can see here is our services page with a draft and we can click on edit with Divi and that will also take us into the Divi Builder. What you don't want to do is click edit because that will take you into the default WordPress editor and that's not what you want. So if you're coming in to a page, click on edit with Divi, it will take you straight into the Divi Builder. Uh, with an existing page, it's much the same thing. Again, you can choose edit with Divi from the pages menu, but also if you're actually on the site and you're on the page, you can choose this enable visual builder at the top. So we don't want to edit this page at the moment. We want to start looking at a new page. So we're going to come down to Pages. We're going to choose All Pages. And here's our Draft Services page. And we're going to click on Edit with Divi. Once we're into the Builder, we're presented with three options. Build from scratch, which is pretty straightforward. Build your page from the ground up. The second option, which is choose a pre-made layout and the third option to clone an existing page. Now, it gets a little bit confusing here because quite a few of these things take you to the same place by a different route. Um, I nearly always just use this build from scratch option because even once you're in there, there are still options to load layouts from other sources. However, let's just have a look at each of these in turn. So if we go to build from scratch, you will come straight into the builder you have a section, you can't see it at the moment, but there's a section that's already been inserted for you and you can then choose to add the rows. So that's very simple, very straightforward and you're straight into the build from scratch option. If you don't go down that route, so we'll come back to the dashboard, back to pages and we'll come back into our draft and we'll choose edit with Divi again. Once again, we're given these options. So the next one will go with choose a pre-made layout and you have several alternatives here. We have pre-made layouts from the Divi library. So you can scroll down and you could, I don't know, say go with a Divi tattoo shop layout and you have all the different pages and you could say choose the um, about page. And if you did that and you clicked on use this layout, that would load this page into your layout and then you can, can customize it how you want. So that's one option. Second option is your saved layouts and this will take you to your library and it will show you any layouts that you've saved. Now, I, I don't actually have any at the moment, so I'm not seeing anything there. There is an option if you have a Divi Cloud account, which all depends on your or Divi membership level, you can sign into Divi Cloud and you then can retrieve your saved layouts from your cloud account. Really useful if you want to just keep everything there. And then each time you build a site, you've built up a nice little library of material that you can download when you need it. The final option is your existing pages, and that gives you the option to clone a page on your site. So in this case, the only page we've got is the home page, and it will allow us to clone that, clone a copy of that and to edit that. One final option you've got here is you've got an option to import a layout. So if you've saved a layout maybe to your local computer, uh, you can use that layout and you can also load that. So those are your options, a pre-made layout from the Divi library, one of your saved ones, either locally or on the Divi Cloud, or an existing page from your website. OK, so I'm not actually going to choose any of those. So I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to go back to the dashboard. And we're going to come in again 
to pages and we're going to look at the third option and the third option is really just a subset of the second option. So if you remember, when we were in this choose a pre-made layout, one of the options was to clone an existing page. But if we choose this one, we come to exactly the same screen. In fact, we also have the pre-made layouts and the saved layouts. So really, there's no difference between the third option and the second option in my mind. Let's go back to the menu for the final time. We're going to click on Edit with Divi. And this time, I'm going to choose the Build from Scratch option. What we're going to do is just put a little bit of content on this page so I can start to show you how the builder works. So don't worry, I'm going to go through this quite quickly. We'll come back in either this or the next lesson to talk about all of the options in more detail. But for now, let's just put some content in quickly. So I'm going to insert a row. I'm going to insert a two column row. In the first column, I'm going to insert a text module. And I'm just going to leave the default text in the text module. In fact, what we'll do is we'll make it a little bit longer. So I'm going to copy it and paste it a couple of times to give myself three paragraphs. Um, I think then we'll have a headline at the top. So to add a headline, I'm going to click to add a new module. Again, it's a text module. This time we only want the headline. So I'm just going to leave the first little bit of text and I'm going to make that into an H1. And I'm going to get rid of the period or full stop at the end. Now, when you add a module, by default, it always adds it at the end. It's very simple to change the order. You can just simply hover over it. And when you see this little move icon, you can just drag it to the top of the column. So there we are. We've got a headline. We've got some content. And in the second column, let's go with an image. So I'll choose an image from the library. Let's go with this laptop. OK, so we've made ourselves a really simple row. And the reason I've done that is we can now start looking at the different builder options and how the builder works. So firstly, at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see this little um, dot, dot, dot in a purple circle. And if you hover on it and click, it opens up a menu bar across the bottom of the page. So let's have a look at all these options. So these three icons here allow you to choose the view of the page that you're working on. So at the moment, you'll see that desktop is green, but I can also click on tablet and I can click on phone. Once I'm in these views, if I want to change the size, so the phone view that it's giving me is 400 pixels wide. If I want to know what it would look like on a slightly smaller device, um, I can come in and I can change this number. So let's go with 320 pixels and that will reduce the size here. And again, you can actually hold these handles and you can drag in and out to see what your page will look like at different sizes. And when you get to one that you're happy with, so say we're going to design for a 450 wide phone, we can then click to make that the default phone view. An important thing to remember is that what you're looking at here is just a view of the page. Some people think that if they make changes here, those changes will only apply to the phone view of their page. That's not the case. All these buttons are is views of the content and we'll cover responsive editing later on. So that's the first three things, desktop, tablet and phone sizing. If we go back to desktop, the next icon here is a zoom and that will allow you to zoom out and have a bigger view of your page. Quite useful if you've got a long page and you want to see more of it in the window, you can click out and it will show you your whole page rather than just the window that you're working on. The next one along is the wireframe view, and this is really handy. So if you click on that, you will see your page, but you will see it as a wireframe. So you can see the section, you can see the row, the two text modules on the left and the image on the right. So this is a really good way of seeing the structure of your page. And if you want to add something else, you can add it here. So say we want a button on the end of our text module. There we are, we've added a button. Really useful view. The other thing that I find um, useful in this view is that you can actually name all of the different components. So if you want to give this section a name, so say intro, uh, you want to give the row a name, intro row, very original. And here we can go with heading H1, copy, and let's call it a CTA button. And then on the right hand side, we can 
go with intro image. So quite a handy thing. If you're in your normal view and you're not quite sure what the structure of the page is, you can just click on this and you can instantly see how your page is structured and you can very rapidly add other things to it as well. So quite a useful thing to have. Finally, there's this little dot 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 menu at the end and this allows you to set a number of different preferences. So if we click on that, the first thing we see is a copy of this bar at the bottom, but there are also three other options that are greyed out. So I'm actually going to enable them and we'll come back and talk about what they do in a minute. Next option is the Builder Default View Mode. So again, once you open up the Builder, it will go into Desktop View, but you can actually choose Tablet, Phone or Wireframe View as a default. So say you chose Wireframe View, you'll now find that as soon as you open a page, it will come into that view and that will be green at the bottom. But we don't want to do that. We're going to leave it on Desktop View for the moment. Builder Default Interaction Mode. So you have Hover Mode, Click Mode and Grid Mode. And these are the options that we've added up here. Hover Mode, Click Mode and Grid Mode. And again, we'll come back to these once we've been through the rest of this menu. History State Interval. There is a history setting whereby you can wind back a certain number of steps as you build pages. So it's like an undo, but it's like undo in chunks, if you like. And you can choose whether you want that history state to be after every action, which is the default. Or if you want it to be um, less often, you can do a diff you can choose a different option here. So again, I'm going to leave it after every action and we'll have a look at what that does in a minute. Settings modal default position. So the settings modal is when you come into, say, the settings for this text and this pop up appears. You can choose. So say I move it to here and I make it a little bit smaller. And then save it. The choice at the moment is the last used position. So when I then open another one, say this one, it will go to the same position and the same size. And, you know, it gives me some reliability as to where this thing is going to pop up. So that is option one. Another option that you have is floating minimum size, full screen, fixed left sidebar. Let's go with that. I'll show you what that one looks like. So we go with fixed left sidebar. Then when you go into it, you see this sidebar on the left hand side of the page, which is a layout that you might prefer. And similarly, you can have a fixed right sidebar or a fixed bottom panel. So let's have a quick look at fixed bottom panel. And that comes up at the bottom of your page. I, I don't find that particularly helpful to work with, to be honest. So I'm quite happy with the default position, which is the last used position. Page creation flow. So at the moment it's given me a choice. So this is back to the build from scratch, load pre-made layout and clone existing page. So these are the three options that we saw when we went into the builder. As I've already shown you, the load pre-made layout and clone existing page options are all actually possible from the build from scratch. So I actually like to default to build from scratch. So that's the setting I'm going to use. Builder interface animations, that just is exactly that. So as you use the builder, there are some quite nice animations that just make everything look good. And it's worth leaving those on unless they annoy you, in which case you can turn them off. Um, show disabled modules at 50% opacity. So I've currently got that off. The default actually is on and I'll explain what that does. So say, for example, you didn't want to see this image on the phone view of your site. So you can go into this menu on the side here. You can choose disable and then you will see the three different sizes, phone, tablet and desktop. If you didn't want to see this image on the phone, you can click on it and it will turn red. So then what happens is if you go to phone view, you will see this image greyed out and it's greyed out because in your option here, it says show disabled modules at 50% opacity. Depending on how you work, it will give you an idea that there is a module there, but that you've disabled it. But that's not what you'll actually see on the, on the final page. What you'll actually see is no module at all. And if you turn that off, you will see the page as you're going to see it. And I actually prefer that. I think that's a better option. So I leave that setting off. Group settings into closed toggles. That is currently on. Let's have a look what we mean by that. So if we go into a setting, say for this headline, you'll see if we go to design that all of the options are grouped into headings and you need to click for it to drop down and show you all the settings. Quite, I, I think quite a good and structured way of working. So I leave this setting on. 
If we were to turn it off, we'll then find that if we open up a settings modal, every single setting is actually open. So we'll end up with a huge long list of things. Some people like to work like that, but I find it really distracting. I would much rather work with them in closed toggles. So that's what I'm going to choose. Add placeholder content to new modules. So that is also on at the moment. What that means is if, say, we add a new text module, we end up with this default text. If we disable this option, again, add another text module, it's basically empty. So you can have either. I quite like to have the placeholder text there, so I have this turned on. And finally, theme builder template editing. Uh, you, you just need to leave that on. If you want to use the theme builder and you want to edit templates, then you need to leave that setting on. That's all the different options covered in the builder settings. Now, we added these three icons at the bottom. So the first one is hover mode. The second one is click mode. And the third one is grid mode. Now, the builder will default to hover mode. And as I say, you have the option to turn these little buttons off. What do the three different modes mean? So we're in hover mode at the moment, and that literally means that as we hover around the screen, the different elements are selected and we can choose the settings or any of the other settings from the menu uh, on hover. We don't need to interact. The second option is to go to click mode. And what happens then is that as we go around the screen, it highlights the different elements, but it doesn't actually choose them and allow us to edit them. In order to choose them, we just click once on them and we can then see the, the whole structure for that particular element. So we can see the element itself, its parent and the parent above it. And as we hover around, these are highlighted in green. Now, I quite like this way of working. Um, it's easier, I think, to select things. But, you know, again, purely a matter of taste. I'm actually going to turn it off because while I'm making tutorials, most people leave it in hover mode. And so that's what they expect to see. The final mode can get a bit overwhelming because that is grid mode. And when you turn that on, you see the entire structure of your page and you have the ability to choose any of the modules. What's quite handy about that is that it's quite easy to lose things on your page. And if you want to see, well, where is that element? If there's some element that's causing an issue. So you've got two options for doing that. You can go to the wireframe mode, which obviously also shows you all of your um, modules. But the other option you have is to stay in your desktop mode and to click on this grid mode. And again, if you just want to use the hover mode, you're not interested in these other modes, you can come back here and you can disable them all. You can disable the hover one as well because that is the default. Uh, and then you're just back to normal. OK, so the next setting here is load from library. So remember I said that really there's no disadvantage to choosing build from scratch each time you build a new page. So if you do choose build from scratch, so let's actually just get rid of everything on this page, which this bin will do. So instead of building the page, you can just come out of this and you can check, click on this plus and you can then simply add a page layout. The next option we have here is to load from library. And again, we can choose a layout. Um, we can choose a page. So in this case, we'll go with, we can go with services and we can choose use this layout. We don't want to import the presets in this particular case. And there we are, we've imported a layout. Uh, the next option down here is export. This would allow us to save this layout to the Divi library or if we have a, a Divi Cloud account, we can save the layout to the Divi Cloud. Next option is to clear the layout. So if I click on that now and confirm yes, we're back to our build from scratch and we can start all over again. The next icon actually closes this little menu at the bottom. I don't really know why you'd want to do that, but anyway, it's there. The next option allows us to add some settings for the page. So, for example, we could change the uh, page title. We could add an excerpt for the page, and that excerpt, for example, may show up if you shared the page uh, on social media, for example. And there's also an option to add a featured image. So if we add a featured image here, so let's say we add this one as our featured image. Now, it won't necessarily show up on the page, but it does mean that when we share the page on social media, that featured image is available. So Facebook, for example, would show this featured image in the preview when you share the page. 
Next setting is design and you have some options to change the gutter width on the page. So the gutter width is the width in between columns. Um, you have a text option so you can choose default light uh, and dark text colors. Um, and again, in some of the, the Divi modules, you have an option to just choose light or dark rather than a different color. Not something I use very often, but we'll have a look at it in some of the future lessons. Then in the advanced here, we have custom CSS. So you have an option to add some CSS at page level. If you want to know more about that, have a look at my video on using CSS on Divi. Um, you also have some performance uh, settings here. Static CSS file generation. If you click on the little question mark here, it'll tell you what it is. So when this is enabled, the builder's inline CSS styles for this page will be cached and served as a static file. Enabling this option can help improve performance. And it is also enabled by default. Um, you may need to turn it off occasionally if you end up with styles that you're adding, um, usually if you're adding your own CSS, and there may be times when that doesn't override the default styles and you then possibly need to turn this off. There's then a visibility option, uh, and this is to do with uh, horizontal and vertical overflow. This is at page level, so if an element is set to overflow the page, um, you can choose whether that overflow is allowed or not. If you were to allow it, so if it were to be visible, um, you can run into issues with scrolling and scroll bars appearing where you don't want them. Best to just leave this to default. And position, this is basically setting the Z index for the page at a global level. And again, I wouldn't uh, change this. I would just leave it on zero. Next option across we have is the editing history. And this will basically keep a history of all the items that I've edited. Now, obviously, I've, I've paused and restarted because I've had to reset some various things in this video. So this just shows the things that I've edited in my uh, most recent editing session. So it doesn't remember between sessions. So this is literally just what's happened in the last five minutes or so. Well, uh, three minutes even. So I've edited some settings. I cleared a layout. I've loaded a layout. So if I click on loaded a layout, remember this is the services layout that I loaded and I then cleared it. So a very good way of going backwards and forwards. There's a global history states here. So rather than just the uh, little actions that I've taken, it's the, the big actions. So I imported from a layout at 1242. So in other words, th these aren't changes I've made to the page. These are changes that I've made that come from outside the page, like importing or exporting a layout. So that is the editing history. And the final one here is portability. This allows me to import and export page content. So I could save this entire file. Not that there's very much of it. Tell you what, let's go back to the state where we had the layout loaded. And I can then go export. I can give it a name and click on export. And that's it. It's basically um, downloaded a page. And if I then wanted to import it and replace the existing content, I can choose that file. So it will be in my downloads folder. There it is, export. And I can click on open. And I can click import Divi Builder layout. And what it's going to do is import that layout from my local machine and replace all of the page content. So that's the final option uh, in this middle set of tools. So the next thing we are going to look at is this little search icon here. And this allows us to search for different actions that we might want to take. So for example, view. So we can click on view and we can go to phone and that will take us to the phone view. So rather than having to go around all the various menus, it's a quick way of getting to various settings. So one more example, um, say we want to go to a section, we can say go to a section, we can choose the section that we want to go to. So we can go to the footer, for example, and it will take us straight down to the footer. So quite a useful thing, not one, to be honest, that I really use, but some people use it all the time. So a little search icon down there, just play with it and you'll understand all the various things that it can do. Next one across is the layers model. Um, and I quite like the layers model. This is, it's very like the wireframe over here, but 
it's actually just a, a little simple floating palette that allows you to choose the different layers. So you can see the structure of our page here. We've got a section. Here's our services section with three rows in it. We've got another section with a row in it, another section with a row in it, and we've got a footer. So say we want to edit the footer, we can go straight into here and we can go straight into the footer. Again, another little handy option to be able to view the structure of your page. Finally, this little question mark here is help. There's a load of different uh, tutorials and you can go through and you can view all of the video tutorials without even leaving Divi. So you can just hey, click Divination. on this Thanks for dropping by our documentation and that's it. For You're straight into Divi. the documentation. So it's video documentation built in. The next setting across is save draft and uh, it literally just does that. So it will save a draft of this page. And then if you want to publish the page again, you click on publish. We can then exit the visual builder. We'll find that when we published it, it's appeared in our menu at the top. And the reason it's appeared in our menu at the top is because we have automatically add new pages to this menu. And if we choose services, it takes us straight to this page. So that's a bit of an introduction as to how the builder works. Uh, in the next lesson, we're going to be having a look at um, sections, rows, columns and modules and how all the tools work in the pop-up modals because there's a lot to cover in that. So I hope you found this uh, tutorial useful. If you have, please do give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you found it really, really useful, you might want to click on the thanks icon and that allows you to donate to my channel. So once again, thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I'll see you next time. <music>